Hi, it's Ryan again. Welcome to the second video called How the Super Busy Build Impressive Native Speaker Vocabularies. In this series of videos, we're learning techniques for improving your English vocabulary that are practical, realistic, and based on research. These are not techniques you'll learn in any school, but they're techniques that fluent English speakers actually use. And now, if you haven't watched the first video, I recommend you watch it now, and then come back to this video after, and you'll get a lot more value out of it. And also make sure you do the exercise at the end of the first video. In this video, we're going to learn how to use the presenter. No. <laughs> uh, we're gonna use, we're gonna learn how to add more words to your vocabulary without adding more work. We're gonna learn what your school taught you about time and learning and why it's wrong. And we're gonna learn why you don't need as much time as you think. So the subject of time is important because if you're like m my students, then you're busy and you've probably noticed you're getting busier. You've got a job, a family, hobbies, you've got a life, and the last thing you want to do when you come home in the evening is use your brain to learn a foreign language. You just want to relax, and that's what you should do. So don't worry. I'm not going to give you some boring homework to do or tell you that you should stay up later or wake up earlier. Uh, my advice is always practical. After 11 years, I know what students will do and what they won't do. And in my opinion, it's uh, rather pointless if you tell someone to do something that you know they won't do. So the best advice for improving your English is the advice that you'll actually use. So let's begin. This is a book I read about a year ago, The Way of the Linguist. So the author, Stephen Kaufman, his parents were actually born in Czechoslovakia. They moved to Sweden and Steve grew up in Canada. But the reason I read the book was because Steve is a polyglot. That means he speaks many languages. And he's got a pretty interesting technique. It's interesting because it's not what you learn in language schools or in high school or whatever, but it's a technique that I've seen and um, that I've learned a lot of polyglots use. And what Steve does is basically two, two segments of his language learning. He first learns the basics, the basics in grammar, and he learns uh, the highest frequency words. And once he has his foundation, he starts listening. And he listens for about one hour a day, he says. That's the total. But he doesn't listen, for example, from 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock or 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock. Instead, what he does is, if he's going for a walk, he puts on his headphones. If he's going to do the dishes, he puts on his headphones. If he's going to go for a drive, he puts on a CD and listens while he's driving. So he listens in small chunks or small bits. And by the end of, these day, end of the day, these chunks add up to about one hour. And that's all you need. If it works for Stephen, 10 languages. And by the way, Steve is over 70 years old, which I think is impressive. So this works for two reasons. Um, let's talk about that now. The first is it's practical. Most of us don't have an entire free hour. We have small chunks of time, 10 minutes here, five minutes there. I like the analogy for time of a brick wall. So most of us think of our days as the actual bricks. We see the bricks bricks are most visible. We've got a brick for our morning routine, a brick for work, a brick for lunch. Another brick might be a meeting, a conference call, a trip. 
But if you look closer, between the bricks, there's this white stuff. In English, this is called mortar. It's not as much, there's not as much mortar as there are bricks, but there is mortar. It adds up, and it's between every brick. And our days, the mortar are things like when you're walking to your car, or when you're waiting for the tram, or you're standing on the metro or using the bathroom. And what do most people do in this time? Yeah, they're, they're pretty much wasted. If you look around, uh, people are on their phones for the hundredth time that day. Um, they're staring at their shoes. They're daydreaming. They're worrying. I like this guy, by the way, this weirdo, not looking at his phone. <laughs> but I mean, maybe, okay, maybe these people are learning a foreign language or reading. Probably not, though. Anyways, so I call this dead time because it's wasted. It's time that we don't use. But if you are prepared, if you always have a book with you or some English audio, an audio book or a podcast prepared on your phone or iPod, then you can take advantage of this time and turn the dead time into productive time. And a small note before we move on to the next slide. I know yesterday I said that reading was the number one activity for improving your vocabulary, and that is still true. Reading is fantastic, but sometimes it's just not possible. For example, when you're walking somewhere, hard to read a book and walk. So in that case, you know, the next best thing, an audio book or a podcast still the same effect. You're still hearing lots of word, new words being repeated. You're hearing correct grammar. As a bonus, you're also hearing correct pronunciation. So reason number two why this works. This graph represents your memory. So on an average day, you're, you don't remember most of the things that happen. Uh, do you remember what you had for breakfast last I don't know, last Thursday. Well, I do. I have the same thing for breakfast every day. But usually we forget most of the stuff that happens to us every day. But something interesting happens when, let's say, you begin an activity such as you sit down to learn something. You get a boost um, or a spike, see, at the beginning and at the end. And so you start learning something, your memory is working a lot better. As time goes on, it doesn't work so well. And then at the very end, it's working great again. And this is why if you're going for a job interview, it's, or an audition, if you're an actor auditioning for a play, um, I've read this advice that you should try to be the first person or the last person they see because they'll remember you better. You'll have a better chance of being remembered and getting the job or the, the play. So why this works, I don't know. It's just a strange phenomenon of our memory and it's pointless to try to focus harder and pay more attention in the middle. And I think it's a be much better strategy to just take advantage of this weird phenomenon and I'll explain how. And I'll explain through a metaphor, because metaphors are great for teaching. Jesus used metaphors. And the metaphor that I will use, just like Jesus, is the metaphor of Knight Rider. Yeah. So if you are as big of a Knight Rider fan as I am, then you will remember that Knight Rider was a very cool TV show from the 1980s starring David Hasselhoff. And uh, David would ride around in his cool car called Kit. And um, I forgot what he did. He was solving crimes or something. But always he would get in trouble. 
and he would need to make an escape. And Kit could drive fast, but in these moments, he would need to drive even faster. So what he would do is he would press turbo boost and get super speed. And if you're going fast enough, um, I guess you can also fly. <laughs> uh, yeah, so anyways, that is the metaphor for your memory. So um, let's go back here. You kind of get um, a turbo boost, let's say, the beginning and at the end. So that's good. But let's ask the question, what if you did two study sessions instead of one? Hmm. Then you would get four turbo boosts, not just two. And what if you did four, three study sessions, then you get six turbo boosts. And what if, instead of three, you did four study sessions? That's right. Two, four, six, eight. Eight turbo boosts. And that's pretty cool. I hope you'll see. Okay, so that's what essentially happens when you break up your study time. You don't study in one in, or one big chunk for an hour a day, you do five minutes here, ten minutes there. It is much more effective. Okay, make sense? Good. So, let's take some action. This is what I would like you to do now. Download and print the exercise below, and then do the exercise. Here's what the exercise looks like. I call it Find Your Dead Time. So in practically every hour of the day, we've got some dead time. So for example, I wake up around 6 or 6.30, and I've got about 10 or 15 minutes of dead time in this hour block. So I would circle yes. And what am I doing? I'm eating my breakfast, and the approximate number of minutes is 10. And keep doing this for 7, 8, 9, and at the bottom, add it up. And I think you will be surprised at how large this number is. You might not think that how you might not be aware of just how much time is wasted. And this of course could be time spent with English. Okay, and then next prepare, prepare for this dead time. Download a podcast or audiobook onto your phone or MP3 player. Um, keep a book with you in your on your, you can keep it on your phone, um, keep it in your pockets. In the winter, I have a book in my pocket sometimes, or in your purse. And for podcasts, I recommend npr.org slash podcasts. This is an American site, and of course, BBC. And for audiobooks, audible.com. Okay, so that's it for today. Thanks for listening, and I will or you can look forward to a third video tomorrow, and I'll talk to you then. Bye.